SpaceX has long been the leader in terms of the commercial space industry. On June 17, 2021, SpaceX successfully completed a launch that was nothing short of a milestone for the commercial space industry. SpaceX was hired by the Pentagon to launch a national security satellite into orbit, with the use of the Falcon 9 reusable rocket for the first time. This was not only SpaceX's 19th successful launch and landing this year, but it was the second launch in one month. That's an incredible rate of launches. On June 17 at 12.09 p.m. Eastern, one of SpaceX's two two-stage Falcon 9 rockets took off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. It carried with it a satellite for the Space Force known as the GPS-3 SV-5 navigation satellite and sent it into orbit. About nine minutes after launching, the rocket's first stage safely landed aboard one of SpaceX's two drone ships. It landed on the Just Read the Instructions. They say it was the perfect conditions for the mission, which was SpaceX's second one in June. The skies were clear over the launch pad, so any onlookers got treated to an amazing sight as the rocket launched and the satellite made its way into orbit. This was the fourth GPS satellite that was delivered by SpaceX for the US military, the three previous ones also being launched on the Falcon 9's rocket. As of now, the US military plans to launch a total of 10 upgraded satellites into orbit. This would be part of an effort to replace older members of a current satellite constellation. A satellite constellation is a grouping of artificial satellites working together as a system. So unlike a single satellite, a constellation can provide permanent worldwide coverage 24-7. The current model that is being deployed into orbit, the GPS-3 SV-5, is built and designed by Lockheed Martin in Colorado. This is the fifth member of the newest generation of these GPS satellites, and they are designed to beam down higher power signals than we currently have. These signals will be more resilient to jamming, and they boast some additional broadcast frequencies that will make the GPS network more compatible with other satellite constellations that are similar. As we said before, the most recent, along with three other satellites, have been launched on the Falcon Falcon 9's rocket. The Falcon 9 is one of the top of the line spacecrafts that the world has seen to this day. Standing at 227 feet tall, this rocket is SpaceX's workhorse. This rocket claims more than 1.5 million pounds of thrust at launch. This mission was something special for Space Force though, for this was the first mission for Space Force that included flying a payload aboard a used rocket. It was only last year that the agency gave SpaceX the okay to fly its shipments on refurbished or reused rockets. The decision was closely following another recent announcement that allowed SpaceX to retrieve the first stage of their rockets during national security level missions. This was something that was previously not allowed. With all of the success that SpaceX is having with these launches, it should be no surprise that the next two GPS missions have already been scheduled for some time next year, and they are set to fly on SpaceX rockets. This all comes as great news for Elon Musk and SpaceX, especially with how heavily the company relies on the reusable Falcon 9 rockets. As of now, most of the first stages found in the Falcon Falcon 9s have each had five or more flights. In fact, out of the 19 successful missions this year, the company has only used one brand new Falcon 9. The rest were all flight-proven refurbished boosters. The way SpaceX's Falcon 9 finds its reusability is something that's really important to the mission. After much trial and error, SpaceX has designed a fleet of drones that sit on top of the water. As the separate stages of the rocket come back from their mission, they will have a propulsion-powered burst to slow the descent, and they will land on top of these floating drones. One of the more unexpected parts of the recovery process comes when they attempt to recover the nose cone on the rocket, known as the fairing. The rocket's fairing is the protective shell that houses the payload, in this case, the satellite. It is set to deploy once the rocket achieves a certain altitude. For the most part, this part of the rocket is usually not recovered and is never intended to be used again. SpaceX isn't like other companies, though. They see the value of a dollar. You see, each Falcon 9 fairing is estimated to be worth close to $3 million. SpaceX has worked tirelessly to figure out a system to recover and reuse them again over the recent years, as part of their efforts towards total rocket reusability. This part of the rocket uses parachutes to slow its descent rather than boosters, and SpaceX uses boats to retrieve them from the ocean. SpaceX has even been noticed hiring temporary help in order to recover these fairing from the ocean. The June 17th launch was also the debut of the fairing vessel, which launched from the coast of Florida. The boat was black and orange and was given the name HOS Briarwood. Its job is to hoist the fairings out of the water with its onboard crane, and if the fairing is in good shape, it will fly again as soon as it is able. Now, this launch will also come as great news for the US Space Force and the taxpayers along with them. You see, flying on reused rockets ends up saving nearly $53 million across just two flights. This number comes from Space Force officials. A cool fact about this satellite constellation and the US military in general is that they nicknamed each of the upgraded satellites. These nicknames were all in reference to famous explorers, which I think is neat. What better way to 
to respect an explorer's name than to put it among the stars. The most recent satellite, the one launched on June 17th, was given the nickname Neil Armstrong after the first man to set foot on the moon. The first two upgraded GPS satellites had the nicknames Magellan and Vespucci to honor the explorers Amerigo Vespucci and Ferdinand Magellan. And the one right before this one was named Sacagawea after the famous guide who led Lewis and Clark on their expedition during the 1800s. It is worth noting that none of these names are the official names of the satellites. They are just nicknames that are part of a long-standing tradition of naming spacecraft. The Space Force has even announced the names of the coming satellites. We will see one named after Amelia Earhart, Katherine Johnson, and Sally Ride, each of which were icons of the sky and space. This mission for SpaceX and their Falcon 9 rocket was no small feat either. This was their 122nd flight of a Falcon 9 rocket. It was also the 89th successful booster recovery for SpaceX. As of now, the company has two recovery drone ships. The one on site in Florida was the one we spoke about before, the Just Read the Instructions. While SpaceX's other recovery drone, Of Course I Still Love You, is on a path to the West Coast where it will eventually dock in Los Angeles, California. There, it will begin the West Coast recovery operations for SpaceX. A third ship is also in development. This one is going to be named A Short Fall of Gravitas. It will be heading to Florida upon completion, and will be a part of the SpaceX rapid launch and recovery system that they plan. SpaceX has set a lot of plans into motion over the past 19 years, and securing this contract from the US Space Force has to be towards the top of that list. Not only is it a great way for them to show off the reusability of their rockets and the reliability of their systems and workforce, it also opens the door for other commercial space companies to start doing the exact same thing they're doing. SpaceX has had a goal to make the launching of a spacecraft seem less like magic and more just a sight of science and physics in action. It seems like they are well on their way to doing this with the number of successful launches they have done over just the past few months. With this job from Space Force, along with their achievements in the reusability and cost reduction of rocket launches, it's something that Elon Musk and SpaceX should be proud of. I, for one, am in awe of what they have achieved, and cannot wait to see what is to come in the near future in terms of the space industry.